Hello, um, welcome to my talk today on a basic introduction to the macula and disease. I thank the Macula Society for um, inviting me to, to do this talk. My name is Aman Chandra. I am a um, consultant retinal surgeon. I work in Southend, Chelmsford and Basildon, which is in the east of England. And I've been a consultant there for seven years. I'm also a lecturer, uh, researcher at the Anglia Ruskin University Medical School in Essex. My training um, was primarily at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London and also the Royal Victoria Eye and Ear Hospital in Melbourne in Australia. That's uh, enough about me. What I plan to talk about today is a little bit about the anatomy and how the macula works. And then we'll move on to the diseases, the, the common diseases that may affect the macula including macular degeneration, macular holes, epiretinal membranes, and macular edema caused by a variety of diseases. Let's start at the top then. If you look at the human eye and divide it in, in half, as it were, you will notice the front of the eye is the cornea, and here you have the lens in the eye which focuses the light rays coming from the outside and these light rays focus onto the retina which is the inside layer of the eye. This is essentially a, a layer of nerves which then send impulses from these nerves down to the optic nerve which goes into the brain. So this whole area is called the retina and that all transmits light into vision. And the very central part of the retina is called the macula. And this is what gives you a lot of detailed vision. So if you take the picture of the eye again, this is the front of the eye and this is the back of the eye. The retina is the whole inside layer of the eyeball. And it's the very central part of the retina, which is called the macula. And this is the area that we're talking about today. If you look at that in a bit more detail, this white area here is called the optic nerve. And that's what sends the image or the impulses to the brain. And this area here in the middle is called the macula. And the very center of the macula is called the fovea. So looking in a bit more detail. So again, this is a cross section of the eye. And this area here in the white box is called the macula. And if you look at it in a bit more detail, you'll notice that the macula is part of the retina, as I've already described. And the central part is called the fovea. And this is the area that's important for almost all the detailed vision. And what happens? How does it work? Light comes in from the front of the eye, and lands on the, on, the, on the retina and the macula. These then, this light then stimulates a reaction in the cells in the back of the, of the retina called the photoreceptors, which are cones and rods which then sends impulses back up to the front of the retina and down the optic nerve, optic, um, optic nerve fiber layers into the optic nerve, which goes into the brain. So light will come into the front of the eye, fall on the retina, and then the impulses will be sent through the um, optic pathways to the brain, to actually the very back of the brain, which is called the visual cortex. And this then interprets the light that we see into the images that we actually see. So when you look at, say, two people, for example, here, the macula will be giving you the detailed central vision. You will still see, for example, the trees in the background and everything around the edges. And this is given to you by the rest of the retina. But the macula is what gives you the detail in the middle. So if you have a condition that may affect the macula, such as macular degeneration, you may lose the quality of the vision in the center, which is what the macula is responsible for. You may still see everything around the edge because the rest of the retina may not be affected, but the macula will be affected and then therefore that will affect your central vision. How do we examine the macula? Well, we use a slit lamp in the clinics, which is this microscope here. And we use a variety of lenses to look inside the patient's eye. And when we look inside, we see, just like those pictures before, we see the optic nerve and this area here, which is the macula and the fovea right in the middle. 
If any of you have been to a clinic, a macular clinic, you may recognize this machine here. This is called the um, Optical Co Coherence Tomography Machine or OCT. And what this does is this gives us a cross-sectional view of the, of the retina, in particular the macula. It's a bit like a, an optical biopsy of the retina. It gives you, it gives us very good detail, um, detailed anatomy of the macula. And this is the kind of details, one, detail view one can get of a not of a retina. And it's absolutely critical to our um, care and management of macular disease to be able to objectively analyze the macula through the use of the OCT. And this here is a cross-sectional view of a normal macula. And I'll be referring to this image throughout the talk every now and then when comparing it to um, when comparing to the diseased macula. So let's talk about some diseases and let's talk about macular degeneration, which is undoubtedly the most common macular disease that um, that we encounter. Mac age related macular degeneration um, is the major cause of blindness in, in the UK or in the developed world generally, um, major cause of irreversible damage and blindness. This is a normal macula. And then we have two types of macular degeneration, dry macular degeneration, which accounts for 90% of macular degeneration. And in dry macular degeneration, you get you get this these deposits, these yellow deposits within the retina and wearing away like um, of the macula compared to the normal. And wet macular degeneration is characterized by abnormal blood vessels leaking under the macula. And I'll come back to that in a moment, but this represents only 10% of macular degeneration. So the vast majority of macular degeneration is dry macular degeneration. So here are some pictures. This is a normal macula. And this image on the, on the left is um, the cross section of the macula that you may have been seen before. So these are, um, uh, this is a cartoon of the photoreceptors at the back of the retina. And these are the blood vessels underneath the retina. So in dry macular degeneration, you get these this collection of deposits underneath the macula. And you see this when we examine patients um, with these yellow deposits on, on, on the macula. And this is um, a debris that's collected underneath the macula and that isn't cleared away adequately um, in patients as, as some patients as they get older. Wet macular degeneration is characterized by these abnormal blood vessels then growing into that space underneath the retina. Um, and when we look inside, we can see this, um, the, the effect of these blood vessels which leak blood. Um, and this is therefore called wet macular degeneration because of the blood. And eventually this can lead to scarring away and a lot of blood collecting in that area. And this becomes um, late macular degeneration, which is very difficult to deal with. So dry macular degeneration is the vast majority of macular degeneration. And wet macular degeneration is a, sm is a smaller proportion of it. Dry macular degeneration can lead to wet macular degeneration. And we need patients, therefore, to be aware of that. The characteristic findings that patients may see <clears throat> is um, a distortion. So you, patients may be given these Amsler grid charts by the optometrists or their eye doctors. And when looking at these straight lines, you can imagine having blood in the macula. It's a bit like looking through blood or looking through fluid. And this then can result in a sort of distortion of the central vision as if looking through a glass of water. Um, I don't like these grid charts because people can get very het up about them and very particular about them. Much more useful in my mind is the straight edges of wardrobes or door frames in people's homes. And I ask people to every day cover one eye and look at a consistent straight edge, such as the, the door frame in their bedroom from their bed. And their beds don't tend to move, the door frames don't, don't move, and so they can do a much more consistent test for distortion. Straight edges are just is all you are all you need. So the straight edges of a door frame are just as good as the Amazon chart. Now here we have an image of, uh, of the dry macular degeneration um, with the yellow deposits and the wearing away of the retina here seen in this um, yellow patch here. This is the OCT scan that I showed you earlier on. This is normal uh, macular. And here you can see some 
um, changes that you see in dry macular degeneration. There's, there's loss of some of the tissue that you see here on the normal scan compared to dry macular degeneration. And this can get um, more progressive. And you can see this scan is very different to this normal scan. The, the tissue has almost gone completely here. So this is dry macular degeneration is a very slowly progressing condition. Although patients can be affected by the, the central loss of vision, it does progress very slowly, if at all, um, and may not actually cause many symptoms eventually. Currently, there is no therapy for this condition. Um, there are some trials with oral therapy, so tablets or injections in the eye, uh, but as yet, this is um, these aren't uh, available to, um, to most people. Most importantly, although this is a slow moving condition, it can change to wet macular degeneration. Now, wet macular degeneration, if you remember, was caused by abnormal blood vessels which leak their contents under the macula. Here again, we have a normal OCT on the top left, and here you see the effects of wet macular degeneration. So, actually, these black areas underneath the macula represent the blood or the fluid. That the abnormal blood vessels um, cause and as you as you may have already remember when we look inside we characteristically see the blood within the macula this is a much more rapidly progressing condition and vision loss can be very quick fortunately there are some therapies available and these are injections into the eye or intravitreal injections which you may have heard of Here's a picture again that, you, that I showed you earlier on of the blood in the macula and the abnormal blood vessels underneath the macula. The injections we uh, we use are a class of medication called anti-VEGF medication. There are three main injections available or drugs available, Avastin, Ilea and Lucentis. And their role when injected into the eye is to seep down to the area of trouble, in particular the macula, and they block the effect of these, uh, they block these new blood vessels um, and encourage them to regress and also um, encourage the fluid that may have collected to be absorbed. And the number of injections are required because the half-life of these medications um, is not very long and you need injections uh, monthly for at least three injections, but, uh, but then the number of injections will vary then as per individual but often at least six or seven in the first year. And the effect of the injections can be quite dramatic. You can see here scans of abnormal macular degeneration and wet macular degeneration over a course of injections, resulting in a more normal looking OCT at the bottom here. Um, and the vision does improve. This is a graph with vision on the y-axis. No matter what sort of regime is used, certainly over the first year, the injection, the vision improves. Um, regardless of what medication is likely is used of the three that I mentioned. However, the gains, the visual gains are most in the first year. And here we have a graph that actually demonstrates that although in the first year you can get a great improvement in the vision, as demonstrated here on the y-axis, over the years, this, this vision improvement slows down and in fact can deteriorate, de deteriorate um, even below to where it started from. So although the gains are are great in the first few years. In the long term, uh, the vision may still deteriorate in wet macular degeneration despite treatment. It's important to remember that. What about in the future for wet macular degeneration? Well, there are two um, further medications that have come available for macular degeneration, rolicizumab and furosizumab, and these are um, similar to the present medications that are available but their proposed major advantage is the effect can be longer, therefore resulting in less frequent and a smaller number of injections. That would be the hope. And they are now becoming available um, for use. There are trials for a port delivery system. A port delivery system would be, is a system whereby a little port is injected and stays on the surface in the eye, just under the skin of the eye. And it's, um, it's, it's through that port that re regular medication can be topped up um, and the medication is released very slowly. So therefore, reducing, hopefully, the, um, the frequency of, of interventions required. Um, these are being trialed at the moment <clears throat> and 
one day, I may, well, I would hope they will be available to us. And gene therapy um, is being trialed for a variety of conditions. Then move on to macular holes. So macular holes are defects in the macula, in particular at the fovea. Do you remember, you will remember this scan here of the macula and the fovea right in the middle. A macular hole is a, is a full defect right in that middle, just the fovea as shown in the scan the bottom right. And you can imagine if this area is split apart, it won't function and therefore you will get distorted vision in the middle of your visual field. There are no, no, no real causes um, that we know about. They tend to affect people um, in their, um, after their 50s and 60s. Fortunately, surgery is available to try and remedy this. Um, the surgery takes approximately 45 to 60 minutes, usually done under a local anaesthetic, and has a high success rate of over 80%. Importantly, smaller holes have a greater success rate. And the thing, the, the fact is that might increase the closure of a macular hole. Here we have a, a macular hole on the left here, which after surgery, you can see the macular hole is closed, which leads to improvement in vision. The features that would increase the success rate for surgery are smaller macular holes. Sm macular holes tend to get bigger with time. So um, the time frame of the macular hole developing being greater than 12 months reduces the success rate so we would like ideally to get you know patients to our attention within 12 months patient ethnicity is a risk factor for failure so um, black patients and asian patients seem to have a slightly lower success rate for surgery and the majority of these macular holes are un of unknown cause but they can be caused by trauma and if they're caused by trauma the success rate is poor so if you if patients do develop macular holes surgery is is possible usually and it depends on how long the macular hole has been there and how big the macular hole is that will determine the success rate for surgery and the surgery involves um, removing the gel from inside the eye and peeling the inner membrane of the retina to put that in perspective this membrane that is pe that we peel is about two and a half microns thick which is about half the thickness of a bacteria and a, a less than a 30th of the thickness of a human hair. When that is peeled, we then insert a bubble of gas into the eye, which will stay in the eye for a number of weeks. And here we have surgery for this, which I'll skip past. I'll move on to epiretinal membranes. Epiretinal membranes are abnormal membranes that, have, that can develop and grow over the macula. Remember the normal macula, and you can see this white area here over the surface of the macula. And this is the OCT scan again of the normal macula. And here you can see this is an abnormal macula, which is very much thickened with a membrane that's grown over the surface. This membrane is, a, is like having cling film on the macula, which then would distort the anatomy of that macula and subsequently, therefore, distort the function of the macula. And patients would therefore also have distorted vision potentially. And surgery is available much like the macular hole surgery, um, rem uh, removing the gel from the eye under local anaesthetic and peeling this membrane off the back of the eye. Here I have some pictures of a patient of mine who underwent um, surgery having um, air put in the eye. Um, and here we have a picture that he drew. This is his window frame in, 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 in the front of his house. And when the air was in the eye, initially he could only see the top of the window on day one, and the rest of the uh, the vision was foggy due to the bubble of air. By day two, that fogginess had reduced to about fifty percent of um, of his vision when trying to look out the window. By day three, uh, he, his wife seemed to appear, and he could see the, his wife's face. And by day four, she seemed to have disappeared again, but at least he could see the whole of his window. Um, when looking out. So with a bubble of air, this <clears throat> this is the kind of appearance you will see perhaps over a week. With the gas that might be used in macular hole surgery, this reduction um, in fluid level that you see, or this clarity from the top getting bigger, can take a number of weeks. So with using gas in the eye, 
that clarity can take a bit longer to, to return. I'll move on to macular edema. Macular edema means swelling. Edema means swelling or the collection of fluid. You can get edema in any part of the body. If you twist your ankle, it becomes swollen. That's called edema. And um, so macular edema means swelling in the macula. Um, and here we have a picture of a, of a vein occlusion. Um, and you can see again the normal OCT here on the bottom right and a very abnormal picture here. And these black spaces are represent fluid or edema that is collected in this condition. And you can imagine there's a lot of fluid in this very important part of the macula. The vision is, can be very significantly affected. The most common cause of macular edema um, is diabetes. And this is because the blood vessels within the, the retina, as, as elsewhere, can become very leaky due to the disease and leak their contents into the macula. And one, uh, one can also get vein occlusions or blockages of, of the veins in the retina caused by diabetes or blood pressure. And those veins then shed their content and the fluid can collect um, in the macula. Once again, therapy is available uh, and it's the same medications that we use for macular degeneration, um, injections in the eye, um, uh, at least once a month for three to six months, and then reducing in frequency. Um, in diabetic macular edema, so swelling in the macula caused by diabetes, up to 30% of these patients, however, may not respond to treatment with the anti-VEGF injections. Um, then further injections can be considered such as steroids. Um, one can get macular edema after cataract surgery. Um, so while after cataract surgery, there can be inflammation, which can lead to swelling, such as here within the macula, and patients can be therefore disappointed with the visual outcome. Eye drops simply can usually resolve this condition, but if that is ineffective, injections of steroid may be employed. So let's summarize, I've, 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 we've talked about the macula, it's the most important part of the retina and it's responsible for detailed central vision. A wide spectrum of diseases can affect the macula, of which I've given you just a few. Macular degeneration we've talked about, and we've talked about intravitreal injections in the eye. We've talked about macular holes and the surgery that has a high success rate and epidural membranes, which have a, uh, which have a equally success, a high success rate in, um, for surgery. And we briefly touched on macular edema caused by diabetes, vein occlusions, and after cataract surgery. And the former two are, are, are usually treated with injections, just like macular degeneration, whereas the um, macular edema after cataract surgery is often treated with eye drops. The treatments, as I've already indicated, include injections and surgeries, depending on the condition, and many different things may present to us in the future. Thank you very much for listening.